Hello, this is Joe Polish, president of Piranha Marketing and founder of the Genius Network interview series, and you're about to hear one of my Genius Network interviews, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this, and I hope you find it very useful. If you want to find out more information about some of the interviews and resources that can help you in your business, you can go to www.joepolish.com. And we have a Joe Polish Recommends section with all kinds of resources and vendors and services and products that we recommend that can help you in your business. And also for more useful interviews and a whole list of other people that I've interviewed, you can go to www.geniusnetwork.com. Thanks and enjoy the interview. Hello, this is Joe Polish, Piranha Marketing, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Ryan Lee, who's known as the King of Continuity, sort of uh, his tagline that he gets in the information publishing world. And uh, we're going to do a, an incredible Genius Network talk here, and I'm going to ask him some questions about his area of expertise, which is uh, continuity. Uh, I can just assure you that uh, Ryan knows his stuff, and, and Ryan, how you doing? Great, Joe. I'm, I'm excited to be here. We're going to kick some butt with continuity. Awesome. And we just got done. I've been shown in my crazy office, and we've been having a fun day. And I've seen you speak three times in the last month all about the subject of continuity. So, <laughs> like, I need more of this right now. But anyway, uh, for everyone listening, uh, you are making literally a fortune. And you've taught people models that they're making six-figure incomes. Uh, you've, you're making millions of dollars with uh, continuity. And I'd like to ask you some questions on what it is. So before we get into that, who is Ryan Lee? Let's do the quick bio thing. And uh, what do people need to know about you as to why should anyone listen to you and take advice from you about continuity and what even continuity even is. Yeah. Well, about me, so I'll just spend like an hour or two talking about myself. Uh, <laughs> basically, I'm no different than anyone listening. I mean, I started out with a regular job. My first job, I was a recreational therapist. Then I was a gym teacher. Uh, I took my passion, which was fitness, and I turned that into recurring revenue online. I had a membership site. Um, now I have about 45 different continuity income models, and I've been now teaching this these same strategies to you know, hundreds of thousands of people basically taking their passion and turning it into whether it's membership sites, CDs of the month, DVDs of the month. I know we're going to go deep into that today. I mean, that's my quick story. You know, I'm married. I have four little kids. So for me, it's about lifestyle. It's not about having 100 employees and working 100 hours a day. It's having freedom and, and building this business so there's less stress and um, just enjoying life. Awesome. Well, how many years have you been, you've been an information marketer? I started my first website back in 98. Uh, when I was, I, I built a simple website for my personal training business. I knew nothing about technology. I used front page. I mean, wow. yeah, I didn't know anything. And I, I just put free articles on to promote my personal training business. And, uh, people started coming there. I started getting the first thing. I got an email from a guy in like Japan asking me training questions. Like, this is just unbelievable. Yeah. And I started playing around for three years uh, until I got really serious in 2001 when I was a gym teacher. And that's when I launched my first paid model and started making at that time was it was a couple it was like 5000 a month was my first month and that was first time i saw significant income at that time Gotcha. Well, you know, the reason I wanted to interview you is uh, I, I see a lot of speakers, of course, and I, I know a lot of very bright people, and uh, I've seen you speak at some pretty high-level events uh, where there's some uh, pretty brilliant people, and, and out of all the speakers, uh, you have been uh, just one of my favorites. I mean, you're, you're real uh, powerful content. I can assure uh, everyone that's listening to us that uh, if you pay attention, you're going to get a couple of uh, elegant ideas that could be worth tens of thousands, possibly millions of dollars to you in your in your business career. Uh, just in the subject of continuity, and, and a lot of this applies to people that are information marketers, those that you know write books, uh, speak, uh, publish, you know online, uh, you know coaching programs. I mean, all, all kinds of various things in the in the quote unquote information marketing realm, uh, but I can also tell you that continuity applies to any sort of business. I mean, even a lot of my professional carpet upholstery cleaning clients are putting people on, uh, you know, ongoing, uh, you know. Uh, no-brainer programs for cleaning their carpets on a regular basis. Uh, you know, there's veterinarian clinics that will service, you know, animals in various uh, capacities. So any business can have continuity. Any business, should, every business should have continuity. Well, let's define what continuity is and what it isn't. I, one of the ways I like referring to it is you can either be in the transaction business or the relationship business. And so for me, relationship means continuity. But how, how would you define continuity? Just getting paid over and over again. You know, so I, I like to do contrast. So if you, instead of selling a $20 product or widget, you know, a $20 DVD, you're selling a $20 DVD of the month right. where people are paying every month and they're basically going to keep going until they cancel. Just like my genius network. What we're doing right now is continuity. Yeah. This is a continuity program. Instead of you just having a website saying, okay, buy any of these uh, genius programs for $20 each or $30 each, 
get on my program and you pay, it'll be $30 a month and it guarantees you steady income. You know, there's going to be drop off and I'm sure we're going to talk about stick strategies, but you know, imagine having 20, 30, 50,000 people paying $30 a month instead of, okay, this month I did great and sold 50 units or 100 units or 1,000 units. It's just much more stable and steady. Give some examples of some sites that you have that are running right now uh, in, in whichever ones you can talk about that, that, are, that you'd like to that are bringing in money and how much money. I mean, give some contrast from a low-level continuity program to a high level. I, I mean, low-level, um, I have some programs like Personal Trainer U, which is a, a personal training. It's basically a membership site for personal trainers, and they pay $20 a month. Uh, that's bringing in, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a month. It's not making me hundreds of thousands or millions. Um, then we have Strength Coach, which is strength and conditioning. Everyone who trains athletes, plyometrics and all these really cool training things, that's their stuff. So it's more of a soft topic. That's $10 a month. And there's, you know, that's a nice six-figure income. And, you know, up to I have now coaching and people are paying $97 a month. And I just launched that new program and I have thousands of members in there. So that's, that's bringing in, you know, millions a year now that new program, and everything in between, things that are making $5,000 a month to things making $50,000 a month, $100,000 a month. It's just all over the place. Okay, and we'll go, we'll go deeper, obviously, into this. I just wanted to let people you know, hear, some, hear some things right off the bat. Now, in your experience, is it more difficult to sell a continuity sale versus a singular sale, like a, a single transaction versus an ongoing? Yes and no. If you're going to try to sell continuity straight up, meaning you're trying to say, okay, I have... Let's use your program, for example, Genius Network. I have this Genius Network program at $30 a month. And if you're trying to sell it straight up, meaning come in and day one you pay me twenty nine ninety five, and then we keep you in the program, that's a harder sell than, hey, just buy one twenty nine ninety five DVD or CD. That's a harder sell. But a lot of the strategies I'm using, and I think you're using as well, is, is getting them into the program with a low price or free. So you'll say, okay, you can have this special, the best of Genius Network. You get these three CDs and you get them all for free just for trying the Genius Network. You could force them in, which is called force continuity, where basically if you get this free CD and you pay shipping, you're automatically enrolled in the program until you quit. Or you could do optional continuity, which is what I like to do, where you give them the free CDs and you say you have the option to, to try the Genius program, but you can take it out of the shopping cart and you never build. Because what's going to happen is you're going to find people who take the free and low price offers. Depending on the offers, it's a really general, you're going to have anywhere from 20 to 40, 50% of the people cancel before they get billed once. So if you give them the option, you save your customer support because a lot of them are going to order and then right away, I don't want to be billed or they don't know they're being billed and they get upset and they get pissed off at you. So by giving them the option to opt out right away, hey, take the free CDs, that's okay. You're still going to get more people in, but you're not going to have the, the annoyed customers. It's going to improve your conversion too because people don't like being forced into something. They don't like the they don't like the feeling of, oh, man, I have to get this program. Like They, they like the fact they can take it out. Gotcha. You know, what, what, one thing that I've, I've heard you talk about is uh, keeping uh, people in the program. You know, like, for instance, uh, this is sort of a devil's advocate question, and I could almost guess what you're going to say. But, what, you know, if someone was to ask you, someone other than me that's not an experienced marketer, you know, what's the drop-off rate of continuity? How would you respond to that? Yeah, you probably do know how I'm going to respond to this. The, the drop-off rate, you know, on average, if, you, if you're doing a good job, like you're delivering really good content, a solid program, really good value, it's going to be between 5, 8, maybe 10%. That's if you're doing a good job. If you're doing a crappy job, I mean, I was at a seminar a couple of weeks ago with you, and there was a guy talking to us, when, and you had actually left, and he started talking to me. He said, yeah, I need help with my continuity program. Um, you know, last month, I just had, I had about 50 chargebacks. Not not refunds, yeah, charge chargebacks, back. like calling the credit card company saying, hey, I don't, and I said, what, like, and he's like, well, how do I grow the business? I'm like, no, no, let's not worry about growing the business. Like, there's a huge problem if you're even getting one chargeback. I mean. Yeah, like the, 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 sh the, the ship is cracking. How do we build it bigger? Yeah, like, let's seal up some damn holes. I said, why are you getting chargebacks? Well, people are emailing me and asking for refunds, and I've just been, it's been busy, so we haven't even processed. I'm like. Well, that's a big issue. I mean, so that's the other extreme example. I mean, you can get if, – if you're just trying to kind of just sell a program and you don't really care about the content, you don't care about the members and subscribers, you can get 50, 60 percent drop off. Seriously, I mean, you could – if you're selling – you try to do it easy, you try to do a CD of the month and it's just pure fluff and it's pure sales pitches 
I mean, you could get half the people drop off every month, and you have to work your butt off. So it's, there's really no advantage to doing continuity. If you're not going to over-deliver and really work hard and, and deliver huge value, then don't even get in it. What are some of the ways that you've maintained? Uh, I mean, just like me, I've, I've had people that have been with me since I started my marketing business in 1995. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in, and of course, uh, it's not because I'm overly clever with some stick strategies. I mean, we nice use them. Well, nice yeah, I was going to go there. That's exact. <laughs> it's because I'm so damn good looking. So, I mean, if people don't have the advantage that I have in that area, what do they do to make no? You know, I mean, it's because I, I deliver and care about our clients. Now, uh, at the same time, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you are well served to do in order to let them know that you care about them, right. the, the, the remind they get into it. People have busy lives, but you have an interesting philosophy. It's pretty simple, but what, what are some of the ways that you, you talk about how to treat people? So I, that, that's right. really where I'm going with this. You know, what, what are some of your philosophies on how to uh, service and deliver knowledge and training? Yeah, I mean, well, in terms of treating people right, um, I, I always talk about, you know, focus on the subscriber, not the money. And when you do that, you can't go wrong because what I teach is that every person on your list, you know, we talk about lists. We talk about how big is your list. Mine's 5,000 people. Mine's 100,000 people. But we talk at like this, this sea of faceless people, but they're real, they're human beings. They're mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And I always talk about how on my list, my dad's on my email list, my sister, my cousins, my best friends, so like everyone sees it. So I know before I hit send, that it's got to be something good. It's something I got to be proud of. Well, let's bust on some of our friends that we know that, 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 like they, they, you know, that talk about a herd. You know, find a herd. Whereas I think of a herd as like a bunch of cattle, mindless cattle, just going, ooh, just kind of going where. And I don't see people like that. I see, you know, when I go to live events and I meet people and I give them a handshake and I hug them. I mean, those are they're people. We differ. Then I differ than some of the big marketing people. I don't think of people as a herd. You know, and, and maybe it's my background. Maybe it's because I worked in a children's hospital and got to kind of see a different side of people like they're not a herd you know and if you treat them like a herd they're going to respond like a herd and they're just and they're not going to care about you you don't care about them and i just think that's a crappy way to run a business i mean it's a crappy way to live personally yeah yeah no i totally i totally hear you and it well you know and I, I very much believe if you just treat people really well and remember that you know i mean uh that all of us at some point in time you know, before we got into this quote unquote expert guru business, uh, you know, we were struggling and we were Absolutely. hoping to make it work. We were buying uh, knowledge from people that we were hoping would guide us and give us stuff that would help us out. And, and it's not about just selling stuff. And, and now, if you want to be in the transaction business and sell crap in a box, you know, whatever, uh, the reality is that's rarely going to work, uh, in continuity it, it, unless you're just so involved in, in trickery and manipulation, but it's still going to be short lived. Yeah, because people are right away, you know, and, and people always talk about selling products that are under the radar, $9.95 a month. And I've heard some big marketing guys say, <clears throat> you know, anything under $30 a month is under the radar. That's BS, man. You know, there are people who they'll check, you know, even people making millions of dollars, they'll look at every single credit card expenditure and they'll say it's, it was 9.95. Am I really using this? So don't think that you're just going to be able to slide things under the radar. And, you know, there's some philosophies where you create an online program and you never contact them again. You'd be completely under the radar and hopefully they forget about you. What kind of business is that? Like, is that, you know, it, think about it. Is that the kind of, pro- if you have a program like that, do you want to put your mom on that program? Would you say, Hey, dad, you should sign up for that? Hell no. Yeah, you know, I'd rather I'd rather be in their face and say, look, this is what it is. This is better. And you know what? If I get a higher cancellation rate because it's too much information, then so be it. But at least I'm out there putting myself on the line, delivering, rather than hiding in the shadows, saying, oh, I hope they don't notice the credit card charges. And then they notice it a year later and say they want to charge back all 12 months anyway. Right, right. So, uh, you know, again, I differ than a lot of big marketing guys because I'm focusing on the subscriber, not necessarily – the money, but I think people listening to you, I think the people who are attracted to you, Joe, are the people who agree with us that, yeah, yeah. you know, and this is how you build a business, something that's going to be around for years and even maybe outlive us rather than some of these guys who make some money over a year or two and then they disappear and they come back with a different name. You know, this is building a legacy and helping a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and you do talk about how uh, you can actually have a sellable business with uh, developing a continuity Absolutely. program. So can you speak to that a little bit? Meaning what? what sure. Talk about sellability and scalability of continuity. Well, in terms of sellability, if you, don't, if you only have – I'm talking for information marketing. If you only sell books or DVDs, you're only as good as your last sale or your last month. If last month you had a great month, you sold $20,000 of products, you come the next month, you come December 1st, you're, you're at zero. 
it's hard to say, okay, my business is worth $20 million because a lot of the big, the guys with the big money, <laughs> they're going to be like, no, it's not. But if you have 10,000 members paying $30 a month, all of a sudden you have, okay, well, we see what we're going to make. We see what it's tracking. It's easier to sell. Uh, in terms of scalability, it's almost infinite. I mean, I literally run a multi-million dollar business. Like, I'm here in your office. This is awesome. I mean, you have you have a bedroom. You have a kitchen. You have a <laughs> treadmill with a freaking computer. This is just awesome. I have a little maybe 150 square foot little office I have in an executive suite and it's just me. All of my employees, everyone is virtual. I have someone in Vegas, someone in Brooklyn. I just run it all by myself and it's I could literally have hundreds of thousands of members. I can outsource customer service. I can outsource graphic support and, and all the technical stuff. So it's like infinitely scalable. So I have a 25K group j- just as an example. Uh, people pay 25000 a year. Uh, the majority of them, I started this program at the time we're doing this interview uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, people keep renewing every year. Would you call that a continuity program? They pay 25000 up front, but it's not like we automatically charge them. It's That's totally right. optional yeah. to pay a year at a time. You know, it, it's funny. It's a myth that people think continuity has to be a monthly thing that's on automatically. It doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be. I mean, my first membership site was uh, $50 a year, and it wasn't built, rebuilt automatically. We sent them reminder notices like, like newsletters, and it worked. And people would renew, and some people wouldn't. But it doesn't necessarily have to be monthly. It can be yearly. I mean, this is a continuity program. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Is I'm not. I'm not joking either. I, di- I didn't even know how you, you as a continuity expert, would define a, a sale like. That. No, it, it's yeah. I mean, it's not a one-off sale. It's something that's happening over and over again. It's the same. It's the same program. The same product, I guess, if you will. So. It's absolutely considered continuity. Okay. It's a freaking great continuity program. No, no, well, it is, and 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 what's funny is that it's it's got an incredibly great, uh, you know, uh, ret- return on terms of the investment. The people make a lot of money in it. It's a, it's a free program, as is any good marketing. I think should be if people implement it. And every business can should follow your model and and have all different ranges. And they and I think every business should have some type of high price coaching program. Yeah. You know, no matter what, even if you're doing dry cleaning, you know, and you're a successful dry cleaner. Create some kind of dry cleaning coaching program where you're teaching other dry cleaners. Right. You know, I mean, there should, there could, there's always a high price thing because there's always going to be a certain percentage of your market that's going to want to go for the highest price. Right, right. And, and the way that I would say that, and, and to, just to be, you know, very transparent, um, you know, a lot of this, a, a pricing model has everything to do with the, uh, seriousness of the uh, of the prospect, how much they put onto it, and who it attracts. I mean, you even said this when we do free trial offers. When you do free trial offers, one dollar offers. Where do the biggest pain in the butt customers come from? If you even want to call them pain in the butt customers, yeah. like the, you know, and I'm not saying that that customers are pain in the butt. What I'm saying is, where do the no, problem? Some are, some yeah, are pain yeah. In the butt. Where what attracts the the highest problem children? It's the low price stuff. Absolutely. Why? Why? Why is that? It's just a different mentality. It, it's it's funny because you think of, you know, we everyone has this assumption when you're wealthy, you're you, you're very snobby and you have all this. You expect everything for you. But when you do this low price products, like if you do a continuity program and you're doing a free trial or a dollar trial, you're going to get a lot of tire kickers in, and you're going to get people for some reason who expect so much of you, and they're always the one who's who gives you the hardest time every single time. But if you start charging more money, you charge your t- you have your 25K group, for example, they can come here and you could just give them a wa- bottle of water. They'll be fine. Right. They won't complain at all because they're serious. They're paying for the content and they're, they're really invested in it. But if you did this, if you had the same group, the same information and you made it free, they're going to be like, hmm, no breakfast, no coffee. Exactly. It's just, uh, and I use the example in the seminar. My wife and I used to go to a movie theater all the time in the city when I had no money. We used to go to the $2 movie theater. It cost $2, movies that were out for two weeks, and people would bring their crying babies. They would yell at the screen. They'd talk on their cell phones. And there was a review in the ma- in the newspaper, in the Village Voice, and they said, you know, they called the movie theater and said, $2 movie for a $2 crowd. Yeah, I'm not saying if you don't have money, you're not a good person. I didn't have money. I know a lot of people who don't have money. It doesn't mean it. But for some reason, it's just it tends to be people who have really – high demands and they just tend to be the biggest pains in the butt. So be prepared when you do low price and free offers. And again, I'm not saying everyone. I'm just saying like we had a, we had a, a recent launch and there was a technical issue. So I had people who paid like a hundred bucks and they did thousand dollar upsells and I had people who paid a dollar. And ninety nine percent of the time the people who had the biggest issue saying, Where's my login? Is this a scam? I emailed you five hours ago. I didn't re- hear a response yet. Ninety nine percent of the time it was the people who just paid a dollar. Like every time I look up their account they just paid the, it was just Unbelievable. And the people who paid a thousand would email me, I swear to you, they'd say, 
Hey, Ryan, I just signed up for your kosher thing. I can't wait to get started. I know there was a little technical issue, but just email me the password whenever you get a chance. And and they just paid. So you would think the person who paid a thousand dollars would be like livid. Where is this? But they're the ones. Hey, I know it's going to be fine. Just give it to me whenever you get a chance. Right. And I just thought that was really uh, just really interesting. Get, getting to see it on such a large scale is just kind of eye opening. Yeah. Well, you know, the the psychology of human behavior is always uh, continually fascinating to me. <laughs> um, so okay. So going back to the scalability and saleability conversation that we had before, I took you off on a tangent from. All the different ways that you can build and grow a business, why do you think continuity is, from a long-term exit strategy, the best way? Because it's as as close to guaranteed income as you're going to get, and it's just such an easier thing to sell. I mean, again, you're not relying on so much pressure for you to always market and to always sell to new customers. You're just concentrating on delivering the value to your current customers, and they stay with you, and... I guess that's my best answer. I mean, it's just, I don't, it's just everything. But by the way, with the customer, like, I mean, you know, if you're going to sell a business, one of the first things they ask is, what's your customer list? Right. And if you say, I have a customer list of 10,000 people, and they say, well, how many have bought and how, how often have they bought in the past two months? You know, when you're buying leads, what's the hottest lead, the freshest lead? Are they paid leads? Now you look at a continuity business, hey, I have 10,000 people, and by the way, they're all paying $50 a month. You're like, oh my God, they're not only customers, they're paying, they're paying every month. So it's just such an attractive thing, especially for big potential VC people. Like if you're looking to sell a business for millions and millions of dollars, you're getting sophisticated buyers. You're getting the buyers from uh, venture capitalists. You're getting the guys with the MBAs, you know, with the number crunchers. So they're going to be looking at all this stuff and they're going to say, how much are they making? What's the customer list? Um, how much fat can I trim fr from it? You know, so if you have some some kind of fat built into the business, what can they get rid of to make it even more profitable? Um, so it's it's just a great thing for a nice strategy. But okay. Well, okay. So promoting it, um, like, what are some clever ways that, and, and some of the most effective ways that you have used in order to sell people uh, into continuity programs? Well, in terms of in terms of getting new members, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, members. Number one is definitely joint ventures and and affiliate marketing. It's it's hooking in with the people who already have the relationships rather than starting from scratch. I mean, I don't. People are going to think I'm insane. I don't do any pay-per-click advertising anymore. Um, I used to do it back when it was go-to, about 10 years ago. I used to get them for a penny a piece. Wow. Uh, oh, my God. And there was no there's no competition. I own the market. You look at baseball training, sports training. I was number one in everything. Um, but now my number one by far is strategic alliances. It's finding the people who have a list of 20,000, 50,000 people who have good relationships and them endorsing me. You know, people think, okay, Ryan, what's the best email to send to someone to, to have them endorse you? And... You've heard me talk about this at the at the events. It's it's relationships. It's going to live events. It's talking to them at the event. It's and it's introducing yourself and saying, you know, if I want to work with you, Joe, it's meeting you and saying, Joe, man, I love your stuff. I love the Genius Network. It's the greatest thing ever. You're a handsome man. I say all that stuff, buddy up. Yes. And then I say, you know, by the way, look, I'm I just have a new site. It just launched. I have a couple hundred people. I have a thousand people. How can I help your business? How can I help you? Right. And you just develop that relationship. I wouldn't say to you. Hey Joe, nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. Um, here's my newsletter. Would you mind promoting it? Because you get you get pitched all the time. The guys with good lists, the men and women with good lists, they get pitched all the time. So you have to say, how can I help you? You develop that relationship, and let them endorse you. And that I mean, that's the easiest way. It costs no money, and you're only paying for results. So how can you beat that? No money, you pay for results, and you could reach literally unlimited amount of people. I mean, I had I had like a hundred people mailing for my last coaching program. And we got thousands of people in at a hundred dollars a month with zero upfront costs for me. Zero. I mean, if you did nothing else, if you didn't know anything about SEO, you know, search engine optimization, you didn't know anything about, you didn't know a tweet from a tweet, whatever. I'm not going to get graphic here. Um, <laughs> you didn't know Twitter. You don't know Facebook. You don't know Amazon. You don't know anything. If you just are good at relationships and and developing a bond and doing affiliate and joint venture marketing, you could make millions, literally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've built this empire. I mean, you can. All, I love hanging out with you because you could just. You, we'll be talking. We'll be like, oh yeah, that's what Bill Clinton said. Like you know, Desmond Tutu. I don't know who you know, but you know all these guys. Jeez. So, but that's what I'm saying. But it's relationships. I mean, if you don't, if you didn't even have a computer, if you didn't have any of this stuff, websites, you could still make millions of dollars because of all the relationships. And I know all the stuff you're working on with all the charities and all the stuff you're doing. I mean, it's it's relationships. Yeah, and and I I would yeah I would highly encourage everyone to really pay uh, attention to what Ryan just said because he's absolutely right. I mean, if you think about, you know, I like to refer to that as your genius network. Who are all the people that you know that have connections, that have relationships, that have capabilities, that have the ability to recommend, endorse, introduce you to 
to people that if you were to go out and rec- recreate those people from scratch, not only would uh, cost a, a bloody fortune, it would take an enormous amount of time and an enormous amount of effort because of all of the things that you would need to do. And then you'd have to get introduced to them cold. I mean, <clears throat> people talk about the six degrees of separation or six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You've heard of that with yeah. the movie. But I think it's much less than that, especially with products you want to have marketed. I mean, my number one affiliate, actually he was my number two affiliate, I didn't even know him, but I knew someone else who he promoted. And that person who I knew, Kyle, I said, hey, Kyle, can you introduce me to Justin? Because I know he just promoted you. Absolutely. And they did an email intro, and all of a sudden he sent me, you know, a thousand new customers. I didn't know him. And if I would have tried to email Justin, first of all, I didn't have his personal email. I never could have gotten in touch with him. He probably wouldn't have known who I was, and he wouldn't have endorsed for me. And same thing with you, all the relationships that you have and relationships that I have. You know, I can say, oh, Joe, can you, um, can you introduce me to, you know, Vic Conant or whoever? Like, you're only one or two people away. And then once you meet that person and you get that kind of even a virtual handshake, you just send an email to both of us. It, one relationship can change everything. It literally can change your life. I, I, you know, I'm going to ask people to, if they're not driving, to write down a virtual handshake yeah. and just use that as a metaphor to think about all of the people that you can connect with, with from a joint venture capacity. Okay, so uh, parasite marketing, jo- doing joint ventures. Absolutely. Um, what about free and low-cost trials? I mean, we talked about the negative side of that, but right. let's talk about the positive side. Of it. It's going to get so many more people in the door, like 10 times the amount of people. You're going to have more cancellations, a little more customer support to deal with, but you get so many more people in, it's worth it. So if you get them in, free trials tend to work best for physical products because you usually the way it usually works, you do a free tra- you do a free product and you charge for shipping. So that way you're getting the credit card and then you can put them on the monthly program. But you have to make sure if it's forced continuity, even if it's not, be 100% up front that, hey, you're going to be billed $29.95 a month, $59.95 a month. And you don't want to overwhelm them. For example... If, if you're doing a free trial, you don't want to give a 50 DVD set because what's going to happen is you're going to get this big box. Everyone talks about – Dan Kennedy's talked about the thud factor. But if people do it for a free trial and they get 10 DVDs and you know the Joe Polish Genius Network and you have 500 CDs, they're never going to get through it. Right. So by the time they're in month one, they're, they're going to get another CD in a mail 30 days later. They're going to be like, oh my god, this, I didn't even get through the first package yeah. and they're just going to cancel. But if you send them maybe one CD – or the best of the genius where it's one or two interviews or highlights or transcripts or something, uh, that's going to get them to consume it quicker and they're not going to be overwhelmed. So I found uh, DVD and CD tend to work best. I've also done it with a book. And the book works well, not quite as well because most people don't read the damn books. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, and I give away the 300-page book. People loved it, but they're like, oh, I didn't even finish, so I'm just going to cancel. But DVDs and CDs tend to work, and they have a higher perceived value. So, so just when you're doing so – the, so the distinction there is don't overwhelm them. Make don't sure that they can them. consume it and really appreciate what it is you got, or they're not going to have an opportunity psychologically right. to want to – And that's for a free – now, there's a difference between a free trial and then there's like a dollar. The dollar offer usually works best for digital products because, again, I always talk about transparency. And if you try to tell people, okay, I'm going to give you this – Free ebook, but give me your credit card, and there's a, a three dollar quote unquote you know access fee. People are like, oh man, this is just a scam because he's just doing it to get my credit card. They know people aren't dumb. We're not a herd, you know. We're we're smarter than that. You make it a dollar trial, and it makes sense. Okay, he's asking for my credit card because it's a dollar, and then you tell them why and why why you're doing this dollar offer and how much value you want to deliver. And almost all my memberships now we do dollar trials, and we test. We do one week trials, fourteen day trials. Um, 14 day tends to work pretty well, depending on how much content you're giving. Uh, but that's so much easier than selling a membership right up, right off the bat. Cause I've done it for a long time. It was like 1995 a month and I charged day one, 1995. Right. Right. And once we did dollar trial, we literally get 10 times the amount of people in. Uh, any other things that you would, uh, suggest, recommend, speak to with getting new members? Getting new members, you know, uh, I guess this could go on, a, we could spend a whole hour about this, just, um, being prolific, being you, being honest, and having some kind of platform. Usually blogging is best. I like WordPress, um, and, and I blog almost every single day, but really good content. And I do 95% of my content is video-based. So I have, you know, obviously you, you got to capture email address. It's, that's key. You have to have some kind of email capture. And always updating them. I mean, the more the better, good, good quality content. And, again, you're developing that relationship and you're building the list and blogging. I mean, that's, that's my number one marketing method because every time I send out an email, oh, by far, because I have a couple hundred thousand people on it. Every time I send out an email, I'll do a different promotion or 
But you don't have to sell hard on every email. Some of these marketers, I mean, they're just hitting you over the head. Buy, buy, buy. And it's just, it's just too much. People just unsubscribe. You can do a really good content email and then just sell in the PS is what I call it. So you give all this great content. Here's what you do. Here's seven strategies. How to do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have your little sign off and then PS, you know, if you want to get my, my DVD, we're giving away another hundred copies for free right now. Click here. And yeah. people always buy on that. It's softer. It's not as intimidating. If they want it, they get it. If not, they don't get it. You know, and um, with things like like WordPress and you're saying you're blogging every day and giving content, I, I mean, you are giving stuff away for free. I mean, you're giving a lot away for free. You're, you're doing it in a way, though, so I want people to be able to make the distinction. This is all about bonding. Well, well, I give away such good content for free. And with the instead of being a, in a lack mentality, saying, man, I can't give this away for free because no one's ever going to buy my stuff. You know, they used to have uh, the comedy. Remember Bob Newhart? There was, he was the first guy to really put his comedy on a record. And people said, oh, you're crazy because why would anyone buy your record? You know, why, no one's going to come see you live because they're going to hear it on the record. He said, no, no, people are going to see me live because they're going to hear the record. They're going to listen. They're going to love. And they're going to want to experience me live. So it's almost the same kind of thing when you're blogging. You give away, Eben Pagan talks about like moving the free line, you know, right. giving away this good content. And, and they're thinking. But don't you think you know, Eben's kind of a punk? I mean, honestly. A little bit. I'll yeah. kick his ass. Um, yeah. But if you're giving away all this, this good free stuff, people are like, man, if he's giving this away, I can't imagine what's on the inside. Right. I can't imagine what you're going to buy. Um, and you don't necessarily have to give, you know, a lot of marketers talk about selling, you know, you tell them the, the why, but you sell them the how. You kind of do that in a way, but you still give them stuff that's useful where they don't feel like everything is just a choreographed pitch. And, you know, just giving it away is just, there's so much, uh, I don't know. I could just go on and on about this, but I, I, I think that it's a really smart strategy to give away some really good content, uh, in exchange for building that trust. People are going to buy from who they know, like, and trust. And if, if, if you're showing that, hey, I'm an upfront person, here's some really good content. And by the way, I'm going to have some more good content, but if you want more stuff or you want access to me, Here's what, you know, here's what I have. Here's the program I have to offer. Or if you want access to the 25K group, you know, there's always different levels that you can offer. Awesome. Well, um, this will be an interesting question. What did you uh, learn from the porn industry? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I modeled. I, I've, I've heard you talk about this at your speeches. So I've to, never mentioned this to, before. Don't try to avoid this, uh, this question. Right? Mommy, if you're listening. Uh, <laughs> I always, I always teach my people when I taught a lot in the fitness industry, I always tell them, if you want to be really successful, like really, really successful, get outside of the fitness industry. Stop looking at other trainers. It's like incestual marketing. I'm sure you've done that with carpet cleaners. Like, start looking outside your business. So when I was doing the online stuff, I'm like, okay, what are some really successful online businesses? And the answer is, Joe? Well, you, you said it in your speech, <laughs> the porn industry. <laughs> Joe hooked me up with some of these weird sites. He gave me passwords. Um, so I was I was studying the porn industry very very closely, <laughs> purely research, purely research, uh, trying to see what makes it what makes them tick, why the conversion's so high, why the stick rate is. Yeah, that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting across. We're, I've been trying to do this I, straight. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, I, I looked at these these porn sites, and the big hook was they made the irresistible offer. They, t they talk about this content. You're going to get membership because it's a membership site. They're basically membership sites. You're going to have access to these fetish sites. I'm not going to start getting graphic here on your network. I'll keep it clean. But so you have access to this one fetish site. Maybe it's, you know, Asian women or Asian, whatever the fetish is. And then you say, okay, it's going to be twenty nine ninety five. You're You're about to join. You think, okay, this might be good. Maybe not. And then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, for twenty nine ninety five, you're also going to have access to these 40 other sites in the network. And you're like, boom, it's a no-brainer. You start rationalizing. Man, it's only like $2 a site, even though I'm never interested in, you know, whatever. Yeah, other, yeah you get it. You get it. Uh, you should, he's just, the pain in his face. Just oh, you're like, killing me because I want to just go off right now. <laughs> I want to just start naming some crazy niche markets. Uh, so I basically said, okay, this is really interesting. It was almost like a light bulb. I'm like, how can I do this for the fitness industry? And I'm like, boom, workout pass. And then I, you know, I, I looked and I said, okay, I can create a site, just workouts for basketball, just workouts using a stability ball, workouts for men, workouts for women, workout for teens. So I basically built this entire network of all these fitness sites linked in together for one price. Yeah. So I was kind of the first one to look outside of the industry and do it in an industry that wasn't 
porn. Well, no, and, and look, in, in all actuality, I think there's a, a lot of an enormous scumbags in the pornography industry, and, and they, they have figured out the ways to enslave, uh, right. you know, addicts with with the way that they, that they do it. Now, that aside, uh, almost all of the technological advancements uh, in marketing uh, have been tested and discovered in the pornography industry and in the in the adult industry long before they ever get to mainstream. They they were the first ones with 900 numbers. They're you know they're the yeah. first ones with VHS and beta and DVDs. Ahead. Yeah, they, ahead. and so what what the, the context here, which is important and valuable to everyone listening, is what you noticed is that there's a bundling of of different areas of interest and you put them all together and you created an irresistible offer so when they joined what they started with their one area of interest in the fitness industry right. you now gave them multiple different membership sites just added on as part of it and like wow you you created an irresistible offer and that's what every marketer needs is an irresistible offer it's it's no longer an option not that it ever really was but especially now with increased competition and people are only one click away. You need an irresistible, and not just irresistible, like an insane offer. I mean, you have to give so much value and, you know, 20 times, 100 times the value to, to get people to take out their credit card. I mean, you, you just unbelievable in terms of the type of, so that's the type of thing that, hey, I could join one fitness site for twenty nine ninety five a month, or I could join this, and I could have access to 50 sites for the same price. Right. What are you going to choose? Yep. You know, you almost kind of taking out the knees of your competition. Yeah, I mean, you want, you really want people to, to, to have the feeling, being very disturbed by an action to where, like, I'd be crazy not yeah. to do this. And if you, and, and the closer you can get to that sort of offer, the better. And, and I always tell people, like, run it by your potential clients and say to them, oh, I'm developing this site. It's going to have this. You're going to have access to 50 sites. It's $29.95. Um, it's going to be all this. And if they start saying, oh, man, that's great. When's it going to be live? When can I join? You know you're onto something. If they're like, Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe it's not good enough. And I want, and I'm talking like everyone, like 100% of the people have to be like, I want to take, and, and don't launch it until everyone's like, oh my God, I can't wait to jump on that. Well, there, there's, there's people that are listening that will be experienced marketers that already have membership sites, that already have continuity, that are making millions of dollars, and there's other people that have never done this. And so, um, they're like, well, you know, how do I start? Uh, and, and so I'd like to ask you, what are some examples of continuity programs selling things that people would never even think of? Um, okay. An example I use a lot, sock of the month. Yeah. Right? So people love when I use this example because you think of something that's a commodity, really, socks. And there are well over a dozen programs, different programs on the internet selling sock of the month clubs that range, you know, in price from $20 a month to like $60, 60, like six zero per month for like these high end dress socks of the month. And there's even one which I, people love this when I use this example that there's one and they don't even give you a damn sock. They literally give you a, a, a template, okay, here's the yarn, and here's how to go sew your own, your own sock. And you're people paying like $20, $30 a month to make their own socks. It's, it's just insane. And in terms of membership sites, I mean, everything from dog owners to, to people who own log cabins to restaurant owners to personal trainers to massage therapists, salsa, dancing. I mean, there's, there are continuity programs for everything. I mean, everything and anything. But again, if there's a dozen different people, players in the sock industry doing sock of the month, there's something for you. Well, yeah, and so I want to also, because this is a great rule of thumb, you talk about the magazine right. uh, test and also the eBay test to find out who's interested in what. Uh, what is that? I mean, this is this is great yeah. advice for even if you're not in continuity, just to find out what the marketplace is interested in. But for, for someone listening, you know, and they want to figure out where's the interest? What can I sell? What, you know, how do I find it? That, yeah, that's the first question they always ask me is they say, I have this, this niche, like after I spoke today. I was like swarmed with people like, I, I want to do this. Is this going to work for continuity? And the real, real baseline, you know, non-scientific way to say is look, and if there's a magazine on your topic, it's probably, it probably can be a continuity product because people are already, they're already paying. Usually magazines are yearly, but they're already paying yearly for content delivered in that specific thing. So, you know, tennis, golf, dog training, parenting, mechanics, I mean, anything. But, you know, if, if it's too niched, if it's really, really specific, like 
Um, I always use insane examples, you know, left-handed golfers with tattoos and who think they're pirates. You know, if that's so niche and there's no magazine for it, it's probably not going to work. And that's a pretty weird market anyway to go yeah, in. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I tried it. it doesn't work. I, I, can't, I, I can't break into it. I, it's three or four times I tried and it's just not working. <laughs> I'm not going to give up though. But the other, some other resources, eBay, uh, because eBay, they spend millions of dollars figuring out, okay, what are the best categories and what's going to sell? So real basic market research, just go to eBay, look at the categories, see what products are on, on the market, see what's selling, see how many bids there are. Uh, that's going to give you really good. The other, the other place, which is people don't think about, Amazon. Well, every category in Amazon, electronics, books, DVDs, you know, giftware, everything – is giftware? Giftware is a word, is that? Yeah. Giftware. Okay, giftware. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard that before. I don't think I'm inventing words. Uh, you look, and each of those categories have bestsellers. So start to look at what the bestsellers are. So between the magazines, between eBay and Amazon, that's honestly, that's all the research you need because people overanalyze, and they spend eight months doing market research, and let me put people in a room and you know analyze the death. So do those three things. If there's a magazine, if there's categories in eBay, and there are bestsellers in Amazon, go for it. Right. Well, you know, you, you obviously have a personality and you have a, you know, subject matter in your area. Same goes with me. So, uh, you know, what are some uh, good rules of thumb uh, for people going into a, a niche uh, on how to conduct themselves? I mean, I know you talk about find an enemy, be you, that sort right. of stuff. So if you could speak to that sort of topic. Yeah. The, the overall thing is be you. That's number one. Be you. Let your personality shine through. And usually online, it tends to be a little bit more of an exaggerated version of you. If you're conservative, maybe you're a little bit more ultra-conservative online. If you're liberal, be a little more ultra-liberal. Uh, but, but be you. So if you're really soft, hi, I'm very soft-spoken, and I'm a grandma, and I teach knitting, don't try to come online and say, I'm going to kick your butt with knitting. I mean, it's just not going to fit. People's, people are too smart, and they see through when you're being fake. So be you. Uh, another thing is don't be boring. You know, copywriting, the biggest sin is being boring. But the biggest, even worse online is like boring videos. You ever see some of these videos or some of these speakers where they're just so dry? Some of my competitors, which I, I love because I think it's hysterical, they, you know, it's like, oh my God. Well, there's, you know what? There's no personality. Everyone's, they're trying to be so safe and they're doing these awful videos like the top seven ways to improve your dry clean, like really boring stuff. Well, people don't want that. They want to be entertained too. So give them some, give them some real, Juicy content, but do it in an entertaining way and have fun with it and use props. I mean, yeah, like, like Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, I've, I've interviewed Gary Vaynerchuk and he's a character, you know, at Wine Library TV. He's got his thing, he's got the jets, he's got the spit thing. So that's cool. The, the other thing you want to do is always every topic, every market, there's always an enemy. So find that enemy. And, you know, with me, when I used to talk a lot about the fitness industry, some of the enemies were the government, uh, unless you're from the government listening. I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the junk food in the schools, the fast food industries, you know, maybe your enemy are fat, lazy people. Maybe it's the liberal government. Maybe it's conservatives. But there's always going to be some type of enemy. But you have to find that enemy. You have to – and, you know, get the people to rally behind you. Don't be afraid to take a stand. Like, you have to take a stand because you're, there's going to be some people who are going to love you and there's going to be some people who hate you. And a guy who spoke at one of my fitness marketing events, Scott Tuzignot, great example – I love this quote. He said, uh, I'd rather 50% of the people love me and 50% of the people hate me than 100% of the people just think I'm okay. And I, I just love that. And his site's called Fit Bastard. Yeah. And he's just, you know, that's his thing. And no matter what you say, I once told a story about I was on an airplane and this guy, there were two little kids. And this is a true story. It's unbelievable. Two little kids sitting in the seats and there was a guy sitting next to them. He was probably like in his 40s. And he was just sitting there, and the, the mother couldn't sit with the kids because this guy had the ticket. And the kids were like four years old and like three years old. And the mom had to sit like two rows back, and she was sitting in the middle. She was two rows back sitting in the middle seat. And she's like, um, do you think I could switch with you because those are my kids? He's like, he looks back. He sees she's in the middle. He goes, no. And I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. So he's like, I don't want to sit in the middle. And it was like, a two I'm like, are you kidding me? So I stood up, and I said, look, why don't you switch? Cause she And she was like intimidated by the guy. I said, switch seats. I said, you could, I'll sit in the middle. I don't care. I'll sit in the middle for the damn flight, but you need to go be with your kids. And I wrote an email about the story, and I think the subject was like, I just met the biggest jerk in the world. And everyone's like, oh, that's a great, I can't believe that guy. But just, I don't know why I said, it. I just felt like I had to get it off my chest because I just couldn't believe him. And I got like one email from this woman, you're, you're, you're sexist. How dare you stand up for her? She should stand up for herself. You know, you just, devalued her, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so no matter what, my point is, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, 
there's always going to be people who take an opposite stand against you, and that's okay. So what you're basically saying is you considered what you did a very nice, noble thing, and you still have someone that thought you were a scumbag. Exactly. And she sent me, like, the nastiest email. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> you would think that I just murdered her family, the email she sent me, because I, cause I actually sat for three or four hours in the middle seat so a woman could sit next to her two young kids. Yeah. And so the point is... You're not going to please everyone. You will never please anyone, and don't even try, and that's okay. You know, w- would it be great if you had 100% of the people love you? Absolutely, but it's never going to happen. So when you start in this business and you start putting yourself out there and you start blogging, you have to have thick skin. And if you take everything personally, you're going to go crazy. And I used to, I used to read discussion forums where some people love me and some people be like, oh, Ryan's sleazy. He's talking about marketing, and, you know, it would get me upset, and it gets you upset. So I try to, my assistant's main job now is to protect me, you know, yeah. is <laughs> even cancellations. Like, I just don't want, if people are going to cancel, I need to know, but I just don't want to see all the emails. I don't need to see that every day. So I try to kind of live in a little bit of a bubble, no, but no, you need no, some thick yeah. skin. That's a good point, though. And, you know, it's funny is uh, when I met uh, Bill Clinton for the first time, I asked him, how does he handle criticism? Because, you know, I mean, anyone in that sort of uh, position, uh, you know, in, in what he said, was uh, don't take things personally, and he said that the thing that was most helpful to him was the book The Four Agreements. And there's a chapter, Don't Take Things Personally, and, and that, that would be just a, a real good recommendation. If anyone's never read that chapter, it's, 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 a, it's a good chapter in the book The Four Agreements, and, uh, uh, but also it applies to the info business. If you're going to go out there and you're going to put yourself out there, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't ha- develop like what you call create an enemy or be you or whatever, you're not going to have any impact whatsoever. So the, no. the reality is if you're not willing to do that, don't even get into this game. Yeah, if you're just going to be like every other person in your industry and, and the trade magazines and really safe and really dry and, you know, here are three ways to do a better crunch and you're just doing that kind of boring, safe stuff, don't even bother. You're just going to have – it's going to be very bland. You're not going to say anything. You're not going to get people excited. People aren't going to fly from all over the country to see you. You know, it's generic. Like say something, take a stand and get people to rally behind. You're going to have some fanatics and you're going to have people who can't stand you and that's okay. Well, okay, so now let's talk about capabilities that are needed. I mean, you have people that are outsourced, uh, software programs to use, running these on certain sites. Just, just some, I mean, we, we could talk for days just on this particular subject, but this probably will not be our only, uh, uh, interview, of course. And, uh, what are some rules of thumb on, on, I mean, the only program you, you, I've heard you say you know how to use yeah. is Microsoft Word. I'm good at Microsoft Word. That's like my strongest program. I, my, my overall philosophy is focus on your strengths. You know, a lot of people talk about whatever your weakness is, you have to get it better. If you're bad in accounting, you have to take an accounting course and, you know, go back to college and learn the accounting. That's bull. Because then you just start focusing on the stuff you're bad at and the stuff you hate doing. Again, you have to enjoy what you're doing. And if you hate accounting, why do you want to learn accounting? Give that to the accountant who loves doing the numbers. You know, if you don't, if you're not that good in graphic design, don't do graphic design. And the problem is a lot of people try to do everything and they say, I'm going to build a website. So, okay, I have to learn graphics. I have to learn coding. I have to learn HTML. I have to learn how to set up an autoresponder. No, you don't. You have to know how to be the creative person, the marketing behind it, and you outsource everything else. And you could find them, guru.com, G-U-R-U.com. They have everyone. They have graphic design people. They have transcriptionists. They have audio people. They have video people. You can outsource all of that. So I literally have built my entire empire. The only thing I'm really proficient at is Word. And I'm getting pretty good at PowerPoint. I like doing presentations. But No, no. so my, my whole point is it's, it's not real. You don't need to know a lot of stuff in order to do this. I, my whole next goal now, my goal is to be 100% paperless, like 100% paperless. So my, I want to run my entire business with just one Mac computer, and that is it. And I'm, I'm with no employees, like in with where I am, and I'm just I'm all about simplicity now. I'm kind of going on this simplicity kick, this minimalist kick, and I just want one desk with a Mac and run this multi-million dollar empire, and it's just friggin' awesome. And I'm on my way. Okay, so let's see. What's the difference between a between a vertical market and a horizontal market? Because there's different ways that people can approach it. Especially when you're when, <clears throat> when you're looking to create multiple products and multiple continuity products, uh, vertical marketing is the idea of going really deep. So it's it's going after one market. So if you have a success coaching program and you're going after success coaching for you know no, I'm gonna use you as the example, Joe. All right. Your big thing was marketing for uh carpet cleaners, right? So your topic marketing for carpet cleaners, you know marketing, you know the systems, and you talk carpet cleaners. People would think then, okay, Joe, you know marketing for carpet cleaners. This works for everyone. Why don't you next thing you should do should be marketing for plumbers or marketing for air conditioner tech people. But that would have been a mistake because all of your time and effort was spent building this list 
of carpet cleaners and the relationships so everything you have with carpet cleaners. So the next logical thing would be like, okay, I'm working for carpet cleaners. Uh, what else can I have? What else can I offer them? Maybe I could do a, another type of a high-end coaching program, which you did. You could do live seminars and boot camps and software programs and accounting softwares, and you have a buyer's group now. That's going deep and going vertical. The next logical step, once you've kind of exhausted that, which is where you are in your business now, now you go horizontal. Now you take your marketing systems and you now develop those for other markets. And even if you don't want to do it yourself, now you hire other people. Maybe you know someone who wants to license your program and you, they, you, they take the Joe Polish mar- Piranha Marketing and they do Piranha Marketing for, for plumbers or whoever else. But big mistake would have been, I think, if you would have started over, if you would have done your marketing for carpet cleaners and too soon would have went horizontal right. and would have left, you, you know how many millions of dollars you would have left on the table if you would have left carpet cleaning, you know, five years ago, eight years ago? Yeah. But that's what most people do. They think I have this system, I'm just going to sell to everyone. But what you, what they don't realize is you're starting now, okay, now you're selling to plumbers. Day one, you're back at zero and now you got to start over again. So go really, really deep, go vertical, exhaust everything you can with that specific market and then go horizontal. That's great. Well, okay, so, uh, Target, identifying target markets, uh, finding a hook, finding a title for what you call things. Speak to those things briefly. Well, we've talked about this with Piranha Marketing. You know, one thing you don't want to call it, I don't, in my opinion, is interview. Yeah. You know, you want to call it, call it a coaching program, call it an interrogation, call it anything. Because an interview is something you hear on the radio. It's something you, you see on free sites, on podcasts. Uh, calling it a course, a system. You know, I love alliteration. One of my newsletters is called the Recurring Revenue Report. Right. You know, thing, things that are memorable, that rhyme, that have something that. Well, let, let's talk uh, Recurring Revenue Report. I mean, why is that a good name? As an example. Well, first of all, it, it's pretty specific. It tells you know, I picked a niche. I, I could have just done an, a general online marketing thing, but I was very specific. Recurring revenue. Okay, that kind of says what is recurring revenue and report. People use the name. It's almost like an afterthought for them. They concentrate on the, on the product and the marketing and the name. Like, ah, oh, what do I call it? Ah, I call it the continuity. And co-. Like, they don't even think about it. But that's, you know, building your brand. That's really important. Finding out that name. And I asked a bunch of smart marketers that I know, and I, I gave them all these different ideas, like Yannick Silver. I, I gave him ten names. What do you like the best? And almost every time, everyone said recurring revenue report. But but also when you know you also have to think of what are the acronyms? How's that going to look when you're emailing people? Uh, so with recurring revenue report, a lot of times I abbreviate it. You know, if you're an RRR subscriber, right. you know, and it just flows. It's you know R three. I mean, there's so many ways you can play off of that. You, you want to hear something really funny too? Is is I own interviewofthemonth.com. I own tapeofthemonth.com. Remember cassette tapes? And so if there's anyone listening to this that actually like you're talking about sock of the month, if you actually have tape and you want to sell tape monthly, uh, make me an offer on that site. <laughs> I own, uh, what did I buy? I think I, I own Blu-ray of the month, and I think I own Blu-ray, Blu-ray of the day. I bought those when they first started coming out. I like things that are going to have that benefit in there, but they sound good and they have the alliteration. So, you know, but using things like Insider, Report, uh, Monthly, or Secrets, that kind of inner circle, Platinum Group, all that stuff works. And so the names are critical. It's- names are absolutely critical. And go to, you know, go to dictionary.com and look at all the synonyms and, uh, you know, really spend a lot of time with that name. Run it by people. I run it by my wife too. So, and there's sometimes you know when you get it. It's where. And if you if even if you have ten different ideas and you're not sure, buy them all. Buy all the domain names. Just reserve them because right. you don't know. Even if you don't use it now, you might use it six months from now. It's ten bucks a year. Awesome. Um, okay. So last thing I want to talk about is stick strategies. I mean, you. Um you utilize some really uh, awesome stick strategies once people buy from you. And a stick strategy is what do you do in order to make the sale stick? It's it's right. kind of like uh, you know another way of reinforcing the the value. And you know, there's three stages of business. And this I first heard this from Dean Jackson, who invented this model for the real estate industry, which is before, during, and after. What do you do before the sale? What do you do during the sale? What do you do after the sale? And a lot of people can do a slam dunk job of making the sale, but then they do a crappy job during by delivering not really great stuff or not delivering it in the right way. And then after the sale, they just don't do things that if they did, yeah. So what are, what are ways that you, uh, you have this, what you say, this amazing, Technique that is just works like gangbusters and is probably worth just millions of dollars. The telephone, and it's it's just making Mike Hill uh, is a really smart marketer. Calls them the I love you calls. It's basically just calling them and thanking them for joining. Uh, just that. I mean, especially if it can come from the quote unquote guru. If someone just signed up for Genius Network, and even if you call them randomly, and hey, hey John, it's uh it's Joe Polish. I just want to thank you for subscribing. They're like Joe, seriously? They are never going to leave you. 
They just got a call from you. How are they going to now have the nerve to call in and try to cancel when they just spoke to you? I, I've done that, in the, especially in the past when I didn't have that many products I was selling. I would literally call all my customers, and they're still with me, and they're still they're spending ten thousand dollars a year on coaching, and it's all because I, I, I literally spent a minute just to thank them for purchasing the product. Well, okay. So, let, and, and first off, if anyone is uh, has the ability to do that, yeah. do it. And and if you're in a situation, yeah. And if you're in a situation now, we have our team at Piranha. I mean, they call our clients. Uh, and you know, just even hearing about it reminds me of applications of where we're not doing it that I, that I want to start doing that. Uh, and and I've always been very good about stick letters and follow up and sending gifts and, and free recorded messages on the outside of you know um, packages and right. stuff like that. You know, wh- what do you do if you are in a situation where you're making so many sales uh, or the way your business is structured, you you personally can't do it? Then you just you hire someone. You try to bring them in house if you can, someone who's really vested in the company. And even if it's someone, you, you put a local ad in Craigslist and say, I'm just looking for an outgoing, happy, friendly, motherly type person. Uh, you know, come into the office a couple hours a day. We'll pay you eight, eight, ten bucks an hour. All you have to do is just call people and thank them for ordering. You don't have to make sales. There's no pressure. Y- you will have, and I, I put that ad recently in Craigslist. I probably had 200 resumes within like two days. Wow. So you will find people that will do that for you. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the good stick strategy is, is basically dangling the carrot, telling them what's coming next. You know, coming next month, we have this great program with a guy who's doing 500,000 a year or, or a parent who discovered this technique, how to get your kid to bed two hours early, whatever it is, but give them something to really tease them to get them to stay for next month too. And sometimes it's a bonus. You know, maybe it's a, it's a special gift. Maybe it's a t-shirt. Maybe it's a DVD, but something that's going to get them look forward to. Man, I can't wait till next month, you know, instead of canceling right away. Okay, so all right, so all the things we've talked about, uh, famous last words. Uh, how do they find out about you uh, if they want to check out some of your continuity programs? I know you have a, a whole series of uh, trainings that go really deep on uh, how to build and grow. You even have a, a, a summits that you do teaching this sort of stuff. So uh, any famous last words of advice and then uh, any ways that people can reach you if they want to find out more about Ryan Lee? The, the best site is probably just ryanlee.com, you know, Appropriately enough, r y a n l e e dot com. I'll spell that again: r y a n l e e dot com. Uh, also, Continuity Summit. That's where I do our live event, and we have some special offers there. Continuity. I don't even know if it has c o n t i n u i t y s u m m i t dot com. Those are probably the two best places to get started. But go to ryanlee dot com. Sign up for my free email, and uh, you'll see. I, I send videos all the time. You're going to get some good trainings. Look through all the videos. I have probably couple of hundred hours of training video on that site. So that's probably the best place. The, the famous last words is find, you know, first of all, figure out what, what's, what's your passion. What are you driving to do? Create a business that's really simple. Live life and try to find as many ways you can to build continuity into your current business because that's going to change your life. You're going you're gonna to make more money, which is great. You're going to have more freedom and uh, you're just going to be happy like us, Joe. Well, no, no, and, 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 and you know what? Yeah. Seriously, though, it really is. If, if there was one area of business that had I paid attention to it sooner, uh, it would have resulted in, in the millions range of, of revenue, uh, and sustained continuing relationships and a heck of a lot less work is if I would have just sold continuity from the very beginning, because here's the deal. You know, my famous last words would be, well, they won't be famous, but my, my, my last words would be if you're creating value for people and it's doing them good and um, it enhances their life, it makes them happier, it gives them what it is they what they want, and you have the ability to do and provide that over and over and over again, and by doing so, it makes you profit. Why on earth would you restrict yourself from delivering that to your clients, and not making, and also restrict yourself from making profit from it? So, if you have the ability to create continual value, it's insane to not focus on getting continuity together. So, I hope that this conversation I've just had with Ryan will encourage you uh, to put together. Uh, continuity if you don't already have it to enhance the continuity that you already have and continually think about further developing relationships because the future uh, of people you know having scalable sellable businesses will be in direct proportion to the bonding and rapport that they build with people that like them and continue to do business with them yes <laughs> that that's a little more eloquent than my last words no but that was no but I I agree 100% continuity is just I, I personally think if you were to create a perfect business model, that's it. Yeah. I mean, where else can you have a scalable business, unlimited income, unlimited freedom? Uh, 
And you can work from anywhere. I mean, it's, it just sounds like a cheesy infomercial, like pitch kind of thing, but it really is like the greatest business model. Where, find me one that's better. Ch- I challenge you. Yeah. Go onto my blog and tell me a business model that's better where you can make more in- income, impact more lives, have more freedom, and, and live a better life. I, I challenge you. Yes, there you go. That is the Ryan Lee challenge. So uh, thank you, dude. Uh, RyanLee.com is his site. And uh, until next time, you know, go do something cool. And have fun. Rock on, baby. See you. Thanks, man. Thanks, Joe. Hello, this is Joe Polish. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this interview. I hope you found it very useful. Please give me your feedback on all of the interviews that you listen to. I'd love to hear your feedback so we can always deliver a great program for you. Our website is www.joepolish.com, and we also have a Joe Polish Recommends section, so you can take a lot of the ideas and concepts that you hear on my Genius Network interview series and apply them to your business and find vendors and resources. You can go to joepolish.com to find that information and click on the Joe Polish Recommends section. And also, if you would like to find out about more interviews and invest in more useful Genius Network series interviews, go to www.joepolish.com dot geniusnetwork.com. Thanks and eat your competition alive.